In this set of videos, I'm going to be looking at OpenSUSE 11.2. I think Novell have done an absolutely brilliant job at this, and as always, OpenSUSE caters for the new, intermediate, and advanced user. It is probably the most complete desktop Linux experience you can get next to Mandriva, and I'm going to show you this in this video. This video will cover the installation process, and the next set of videos will look at the default installs. We're going to be choosing KDE at first, and we'll look at the GNOME version later. The first thing you'll see is a brilliantly done installer. It's so polished, it looks absolutely brilliant. There's a license agreement if people want to read it before they install. Now I'm using the net install for this. It's first checking all your hardware to set your computer up and partition it. Because I'm using the net install, it's downloading the repository data. It doesn't take very long. Yast is a very good package manager. And I'll show you that later on in the video. Some of the options you can do with it are absolutely brilliant. It is a top notch package manager. And the installer is just so well done. It looks really professional. There is a tremendous amount of work gone into this distribution of Linux. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to untick automatic configuration because I want to set host names and things. You can do this later if you check automatic configuration, but I like to do it first. Because I set the system up to UK before I installed it, it's automatically detected that. No configuration needed there. We're going to choose KDE for now. Partition setup, I'm going to create my own. I'm going to choose my main hard disk. I'm not going to want a separate home partition. I'm going to edit the setup. I'm going to choose hard disks. I'm going to pick my disk. And where it's formatted to ext4, I'm going to click edit. I'm going to change it to JFS, the journal and file system because it's stable, it's reliable and it's really low resource usage, it's a brilliant file system we're going to set up a user account we'll just let use, we'll let root use that password, we'll turn off automatic login it's going to warn me about the password because I used a pretty generic password here techsnap Now as you can see here, it's going to let us customise whatever we want. This is really nice to have this sort of information available before it installs, because then you get to choose exactly how you want your system. We go here, we can set what boot options we want, what, what operating systems we want to boot. For example, I don't have a floppy drive so I can delete that. Then we can look at the other options. We can change the timeout. We can password protect the bootloader. All before we've installed the system. Bootloader installation details. We can choose our disk order. Now a lot of distributions don't let you do this before installation on Grub and it results in an unbootable system. I have to choose Lilo all the time because of this very reason. We can click the software link and we can even choose what software we don't want to install before we even install the system. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Don't want OpenOffice? Untick it here, you ain't going to get it. Simple as that, see? I think this is brilliant to have this sort of customization available before. I'm just going to accept it for now, I'm going to accept the defaults and I'll uninstall stuff later because I want to show you what the default install set's like. It's telling you the size of the packages it's going to install and it's going to tell you how much you've got to download from the repository. It's not too bad for a whole KDE system with all these features. Let's click install.
and it takes it takes about 10 minutes from the disk depending on your on your disk drive speed here it's a net install so it's going to take about half an hour also you can install from the live CDs but then you don't get a full feature set you get what's present on the CD which for most people is absolutely perfect but if you want this customization you're gonna to have to download the DVD or the net install because the live CD copies an image and then configures it after it doesn't install package by package like this does now you can either look at the nice slideshow or you can click the details tab and it tells you the exact package that's currently being installed there's a help button there for more information and it gives you a nice environment to use while you're waiting for it to install I know you can't use anything else on the system but at least there's something to look at and there's a clear progress indicator down the bottom here you know the remaining the remaining space the, the remaining space of the packages it's going to take up how many packages are left to install it is very well done see look there's all the other information it's telling you what package is being installed right now as you can see it's installing the OpenOffice thesaurus it's got your connection speed down there how quick it's downloading and also about updates on this system it uses Delta RPMs so it won't have to download a whole lot of files when you're updating the system it does it reasonably well all round it's just very well done it's a very good distribution of Linux Right, I'm going to stop the video now until it's finished installing. After a while you'll see that down by the progress bar it's got the time, how long, it's rec how long it thinks it's going to take to install the system. That, that doesn't show up right away because it has to calculate it based on the connection speed and stuff first, but that's handy to know as well. Anyway, this covers the installation part of OpenSuse. In the next video, we'll be configuring it and using it. I'll see you in the next video.